All right, guys, this is SureDog.com, one championship preview. I am your host. My name is Keith Schillen. This week's episode, we're looking at one championship, Winter Warriors 2, which goes down this Friday, December 17th in Singapore. If you're in the U.S., you can watch it on BleacherReport.com, Bleacher Report app bleacher report youtube page that all starts at 7 30 a.m in the east coast that would be 4 30 a.m on the west coast we got six really good matchups on this card i think it's a great way to end the year for one championship i think we have three or four former champions one championship champions returning so this is how it's going to go i'm going to take a look at every fight then i'm going to make a prediction I've been on a roll lately. It's been two or three weeks, uh, two or three events since I've I've got one wrong. Uh, it's I'm not bragging. I'm not saying I'm going to get all six of these right. It's it's more likely than not that I won't. So please keep that in mind. If uh, I want to remind you that this is not a gambling advice show. This is not. I'm, I don't talk about lines. I don't give betting advice. If you do use this to gamble on the fights, I just ask that you do it responsibly. Don't, you know, don't gamble next month's mortgage or anything stupid like that, especially not not off my advice. Uh, But let's get into it. Uh, Before we talk about the actual fights, I just want to, to ahead, apologize in case I pronounce anybody's name wrong, which I'm sure I will. So let's get into it. We're just covering the main card, MMA fights, and in this card, we only have MMA fights, so... Let's get right into it. We have a youngster, Janlo Sungao, taking on Paul Lumihi. Lumi- Lumi- I apologize for saying, I know I said his name wrong. Uh, Sangao is a 19-year-old phenom. He's Team Lakai's head coach, Mark Sangao's son. He's 3-0 as a professional. He has three really fast finishes. I've watched his enti- all three of his fights, uh, so I've seen his entire MMA career. It's really hard to get grasp what we have with him because he gets so such quick finishes but from what i've seen of him he looks really good he looks well-rounded fast hands though he can be a little bit wild but he's got great kicks throws throws a quick head kick calf kicks hard kicks uh some of the negatives is though that he doesn't really set up his kicks but leaves them open for counter shots uh, but he's well-rounded. He's got some good entries, big slams. He gets on the hips, lifts his opponent to the, in the air, slams him down. Good ground and pound. He usually quickly moves to the mount. where he, That's where he starts unleashing some hard shots. He's had some good back takes. And he has a submission threat. He has some submissions on his record. Now move over to uh, Lumihi. Lumihi is in desperate need for a win as he's lost four fights in a row. On the feet, he uses a lot of feints. He's a taekwondo ba- uh, black belt. Uh, negative is he throws single strikes and he drops his hands. But some of the things uh, he's that I like about him, he's very entertaining. Uh, he throws out a lot of spinning attacks. I've seen one fight where he threw that uh, that back elbow that Yaya Rodriguez knocked out uh, the Korean zombie with. He throws that. A lot of kicks. Uh, he's got some weak teak down the fence and really struggles to get out, so that's concerning. So as far as prediction, who I'm taking, I'm going to go with the young kid. I'm going to go with Sun Gao. I hate... Like, the spinning it tough from Lumihi is is fun and entertaining. If he ever lands like that back elbow or something, we could have, be in for a spectacular knockout. But I think it's really going to set up the takedowns for Sangal by, you know, g- briefly giving up his back as he d- as he tries these, you know, risky moves. I see Sangal getting the fight to the ground, moving him out, battering him, and getting the stoppage. And I say he does it early. I say he, he makes a statement. He's in the very first round to remain 4-0 and kind of gets some, gets some buzz going about him uh, as he is one of the top young prospects in one championship. <clears throat> I apologize. Uh, next, we have a fight that I'm really excited about. I think it should be a little higher on the card. We have uh, Steven Lohman versus Yusub Sudalayoff. Uh, Loman has been one of my favorite fighters in, we'll say smaller promotion, not a small, not a very small promotion, but, you know, not of the grand scheme of a one championship and UFC and Bellator, one of those, like, the, you know, the next tier down as he's a former Brave FC champion. He has won eight fights in a row. Uh, the negative though, it's been a really long time since we've seen him in the cage. We have, a, it's been two year layoff. Uh, when he last fought, what we saw from him was a well-rounded fighter. He's a southpaw. He's a good athlete. He moves really 
well. A lot of movement, a lot of footwork. He's gets fast strikes. He's an accurate striker. He's got, I'd say, plus power. He can be a little wild and, and overreach on his strikes, which I don't like that. Uh, but some of the other things I like, he, he's got a very active plum clinch. If you get in that mid-range, he'll grab that plum, fire off hard knees, and he's a good wrestler. Good, uh, good entries, good upper body takedowns. He's shown good takedown defense. If he's on top, busy ground pound. Though one of the negatives on the ground is he's not much of a submission threat. Now move over to uh, Sedalayev. Sedalayev, he's already 36 years old, so you don't really like that for a guy in one of the lower weight classes. And not a weight class that two kind of, of guys as they get up there in age. He is a southpaw. I would say he's kind of slow, especially compared to uh, Loman. You know, Loman should have a speed advantage. He's a basic striker, just one, two punches down the pipe, a uh, lot of jabs, got some decent pop in his hands. But some of the negatives is he, he backs straight up. Um, he's, he's a little hittable, too. Uh, he's very physically strong, though. I love... I, I love that he goes to the clinch and grinds on guys. Uh, it's a smart strategy for him. He's got some good entries, but he he slows himself down. If he's if you really press the pace on him, I've seen him gas out late in fights. So as far as the prediction goes, this is a really good fight. I would never count out Sudolayov based on his high level wrestling. However, Loman is is the more well rounded fighter. I think he pieces him up on the feet. And I think he gets some takedowns himself, and I think he stuffs the takedowns of Sotolayev. So give me Loman by decision. I think he's going to make a really good impression in his one championship. That is if he is still the fighter that we last saw fight two years ago. Uh, move over. We have Sebastian uh, Kadastan versus Murad, uh, Murad Ramazov. Uh, Kadastan is Swedish fighter. He is the first of the fighters on this card that is a former one championship champion. Uh, but he Thomas has not been too good for him as he's been on a two fight losing streak. Uh, he's not a great athlete. He's kind of slow, but he's a power puncher. He tends to load up on everything, which I don't like. But if he connects, he can put you out. Uh, throws a lot of kicks, uh, hard calf kicks, teep kicks. One of the negatives, though, is he throws – he doesn't really set up the leg kicks. He'll throw some, like, naked leg kicks, being open to a counter. He's also – because he generates power, he's very heavy on his front foot, which leaves him open to calf kicks and leg kicks. He's also been hurt a lot. He's taken a lot of damage over the years. Uh, that's all on the feet. As far as the ground, he's got a Greco-Roman wrestling background. But I've seen him getting taken down by lesser wrestlers, especially recently. And he's struggled to get back up to his feet. A uh, good thing I do like is obviously his experience and the cardio to go 25 minutes. I mean, he's fought championship fights going all 25 minutes. So having to only go 15 minutes shouldn't, uh, you know, he's obviously a plus. Now move over to uh, Rama, Ramazanov. Rama, Ramazanov is 10-0. and 0. He's 26 years old. On the feet, I would say he's a very limited striker. He really just strikes to set up his takedowns. He he wants to close the distance immediately, and that's because he's a great wrestler. I mean, he's a Dagestani fighter. He's a you know he fits this stereotype Dagestani mold where fast entries, gets on your hips, strong, lifts you up, slams you. Incredible top control, stays absolutely glued to his opponent. Like I said, he's got that Dagestani uh, stereotype going for him where he, he gets the fight to the ground. He's looking to lock up the legs, kind of controlling, looking for the handcuff, the Dagestani handcuff. And then once he has you flattened out, he's constantly working to get to a better position, get to a mount, uh, dispatches hard ground and pound. And he has three subs on his on his record, which you got to like for a young fighter. Um, for, so for a prediction, I think this is a bit of a passing of the torch fight. I see... Uh, Ra- Ra- I, I'm struggling with his name. Ramazov dominating the Swedish fighter on the ground. I see Sebastian struggling to get back up to his feet. I see him getting tagged and tagged over and over from ground to pound from Razamov. I think he survives the entire 15 minutes, but I think R- R- Ramazanov remains undefeated with a unanimous decision victory and, and kind of gets the MMA where we're starting to talk about it, getting a win over a former champion. Oh, good way to end the end 2021. Speaking of former champions, we have the return of Vitaly Big Dash, another one championship um, former champion. He's taking on Feng Rong, who is a fighter out of, I believe, China. 
Big Dash is 37 years old, hasn't fought in three years, so it's really hard. You know, it's really, it's a, it's, I shouldn't say hard. It's a big question mark of what we're going to get, but I can only judge him on what we last saw. And he was a well-rounded fighter, slip and rip striker, does well to slip his head off the center line, land some good sh- shots for himself. He's got some nice snap in his shots. He can be a little too reliant on his knockout overhand right, which I don't like. And he makes the mistake of single of throwing single strikes. And he does like he loves spinning attacks, uh, which obviously excites the crowd. He's got some hard kicks. He tends to throw him naked though, which is is not good. Uh, but he is speaking of good. He's a good wrestler. Good top control. Good back takes. He's got five submission wins on his record. So if he gets you down, he's got a very good chance to, to uh, find a submission. One of the negatives, though, is, you know, obviously his age now being 37 years old. He's been rocked a lot. He's been in some wars. But a plus is what I just said about Sebastian is being a former champion. He's gone 25 minutes. Having to only go 15 minutes is is a plus. Now move over to uh, Fong Rong, 28 years old. Not a great striker. Um, uh, I should say now he's a pretty good striker. So he's not a great athlete. So he he he's I would say he's technically sound. Uh, you know he's accurate. He he does well to you know boxing on the feet. Nice jab. Nice straight right. Decent pop. But he's he's not an elite explosive striker. Uh, he does make the mistake of dropping his hands a little bit. He lacks head movement, and he can be a little too patient fighting at a at a low low slow pace he did show in his last fight he took on yuri samos a former brazilian jiu-jitsu world champion obviously samos wanted to get the fight to the ground he showed good uh wrong uh, fong wrong showed good takedown defense he also has eight submissions of his own so he is a submission threat on the ground uh prediction goes this really kind of just comes down to how much big dash has left how much i believe in big dash it's tough I think he can still be one of the top guys in the division, and I think he's slightly better everywhere than Rong Feng, and he obviously has the higher level experience, you know, facing better competition. So I see him mixing in some takedowns with his striking. I see him winning majority of the 15 minutes, and I say he, after a long layoff, he gets another victory in one championship. I'll say I'm picking a lot of a lot of decisions, but I'm doing it again. I say Big Dash wins by decision. Moving on to the co-main event, we have Kevin uh, Bellion taking on Quan Wan Il. Bellion, and the third and final uh, champion, a one champion fighter, uh, one champion. Why am I saying this wrong? The former one championship champion. It's it's the too many champions in one one uh, word, uh, one sentence I should say. Uh, he's he's the former bantamweight champion. He's from the Philippines. Times have been rough for him. He's on a three fight losing streak. Those three fights are to some really good fighters. Two of them are to uh, Bibiano Fernandez. The other one's to John Lineker. So uh, take take that three fight losing streak for what it is. He is athletic. He's fast. He tends to throw hard. He throws everything into his shots. He makes the mistake of avoiding shots by backing straight up, and he doesn't really like being pressured. But it's, it seems to be a theme for this card. He's the third fighter, I think I've said, that throws a lot of spinning attacks. He loves to excite the crowd with that. Hard leg kicks. He likes to throw those oblique kicks. Uh, but another thing for this a theme of this card, he doesn't really set up his kicks. He'll throw them naked. So, I mean, it's... Three or four fighters in a row that I've said that about. Uh, another thing that's concerning, I said he's on a three-fight winning streak. I mean, excuse me, losing streak. He's taken a lot of damage. I mean, he was knocked out by John Lineker in his last fight. He's had, you know, wars against Bibiana Fernandez in, in the trilogy that they had. So you don't like that. I do like that he'll sneak in a takedown, and he has three submission wins to his, on his record. But the negative is he also been submitted four times. So uh, you don't really know what will happen when it goes to the ground. Move over to the South Korean fighter, um, Juan Il. Juan Il, he's 26 years old. I generally like him. He's taken, obviously, he's taking a big step up in competition, taking on a, a fighter like Billy Young. Uh, Juan Il, is, he, he's a long and lengthy striker with a taekwondo background, though he really doesn't fight 
like a fighter that is long and lengthy. He fight, he doesn't fight at range at all. He tends to be an aggressive pocket boxer who really wants to get in your face and throw down in, in, in the pocket. He loves to pressure his opponents. He throws big combinations. I love that he goes to the body. I also like that he looks for close, like slicing elbows inside. Some of the mistakes, though, is he pulls his head straight back uh, you know, tall man's defense, or he pillars, and both things are, are something that I'm I'm not a big fan of. He will look for takedowns, but I wouldn't call him a wrestler. Uh, if he is on top, he looks to advance position, and he's busy with his ground and pound, which I like that. So prediction: this is a really tough fight. I was actually on the fence on this fight, which probably will surprise many people, being that Billy Young is is you know taking on much higher level. Uh, competition, much bigger names. I think this fight's going to be a banger. I think this is my f- favorite fight on the card. I am going to go with Billy on simply because he's, as I said, he's faced a better competition. I see him pulling away based on Ill's get in your face style. Billy on has the power to put him out. I actually think after they both have big moments, I think Billy on will finally uh, will be the more durable fighter and he'll actually get the knockout. I say he gets a knockout in the second round. Now let's finish it up. We got the main event. We got uh, Danny King uh, Kingad taking on Karat Akhmedov. Kingad is a, an aggressive striker. He throws a lot of kicks, powerful kicks. Again, he makes a mistake. I'm not really setting them up. A thing I don't like about Kingad is he's been in wars, and when he gets hit, he tends to like flop all around a little bit. I've said it about Grant Dawson before, which doesn't he doesn't he doesn't react well to being hit he makes it looks worse because he he really flies around when he gets tagged which is really you know not a good sign especially for the judges but he's a good wrestler i'd say i'd say an okay wrestler a plus wrestler very strong he will slam if he gets around his hips he has been taken down himself a lot which you don't like. He really needs, when he's on top, he really needs to improve his top control. And he's not much of a submission threat. I mean, he's not really much of a finisher at all as he has six wins. Of, of his last six wins, he doesn't have a single uh, stoppage. They're all decision wins. Move over to Akhmedov. Akhmedov, southpaw fighter, throws really clean straight strikes down the pipe, does really well to dip his head off the center line to land his shots. Uh, so really kind of... You know, that leaves you open to a a kick on that side. But if you're boxing, it really sets you up to get your head off the center line, land clean shots. He has good vision. You can see the way he reacts to shots. Um, It's just he just slides a little bit out of the way. Doesn't really uh, overreact. He he looks for his own shots to land. Uh, It was pointed out on the broadcast that he really lines up his left hand with his superior footwork when they're doing that. When he's going against an orthodox fighter, where they're trying to you know, battle for foot position when you're what they call cross sided from each other. He's got decent power. He, he he loves to throw these Holly Holm sidekicks to kind of create a space. But it's surprising that he wants to create space because he's a really good wrestler. He, when he shoots on the hips, big slams. If you throw a kick at him, there's a good chance he's going to catch it, follow that kick back in into his entry, pick you up, slam you. Uh, very solid top control and then extremely busy ground and pound from on top. So, for a prediction, I like Akhmedov. I like him big in this one. I think he's simply better everywhere. I think he starts winning the striking battle. I think he looks for openings, finds some takedowns in King Ad. I don't see him gain the finish because King Ad is such a veteran, and I think he can survive, but I like Akhmedov. I like Akhmedov to win an absolute landslide. So there you guys have it. There is my picks for all six fights. I... I ask that you do a few things for me as this is the last episode of one championship for the new year. Uh, I will be traveling for the holidays. So I, I will, someone asked if I'm going to cover some other events. Uh, no, um, I just, the holidays, I, I will be traveling. I need some long rest and, and time with my family. So I'm going to give them that attention they deserve. But in the meantime, if you guys can help me out, if you're in the giving spirit, can you please like this uh, show if you like it. I'm not saying if you don't like it, if you don't, but like it, please share it. Leave a comment in the comment section on the YouTube page. Um, check out other things on the page, you know, other videos. There's some really good content from so many guys. And then last but mostly, uh, last but not least, 
please subscribe to the Sure Dog YouTube page. That we'll continue to put out content. We'll continue to try to grow us. We're trying to do a lot more videos. Uh, if you see in 2021, we did a lot more videos than we did in 2020, and just could continue doing that. Uh, and last thing, guys, as I said, this is the last one of the year, so I want to wish everybody who's watched any of my videos, whether it be this videos, my UFC prediction videos, recap videos, any interviews I've done, any any anything I've done throughout the year, I just want to wish you guys a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. I hope you enjoy it. Have some great time with family and friends. Have a great new year, and I'll see you guys uh, to review more stuff and, and talk more fights in the next year.